I love game jams. Like, a lot. At this point, almost every other video on my channel is about one. But when I do a game jam, I usually leave about a month or so before doing the next one to, you know, give myself a break from all the intense work needed to complete a game in a time period. But you know what sounds like a fun idea? Doing two of these game jams back to back. Now, does this sound like a good idea? Eh, not really. But does it sound like a fun challenge? Eh, probably. But those aren't the questions that need to be asked. The questions that need to be asked are, did I manage to complete the games in the given time period? Did I recover from all the sleepless nights spent working on them? And more importantly, how did I do? Well, if you keep watching, you might find out. Hey, I'm TC, and I did two game jams in one month. Enjoy! <laughs> The first jam that I decided to participate in for this Game Jam Sprint was the 14th Pirate Software Game Jam, hosted by the one and only Thor. Nope, not that one, this Thor, also known as Pirate Software Online. Now, I'm not very good at game jams, I usually come rather low in the roster, so my plan to combat this was to work with a teammate, and so this is my good friend Instagalactics, who is going to attempt to aid me in competing this jam, as hopefully our newly combined brain capacity of six and a half thinking unit thingies should be enough to help us completely dominate the competition of more experienced developers with many more years of experience. Uh... Okay, now that I think about this, this might not be the best of ideas. The theme for the jam was it spreading, and initially we were very lost for ideas. But after searching around in our brains for some, we eventually came up with the idea of having a black hole expanding, and you trying to stop it. And although this core idea remained throughout the game jam, lots of different parts of it changed throughout. And it all got a bit confusing towards the end, but I will get to that later. First, it's time for... Jumping into Unity, our first job was to set up the basic systems that would make our game playable. Mainly, player movement, interactions, and the level that everything takes place in. First off, the movement, which I created by opening up my main project, going into the player movement folder, and... Now we have a fully functioning player movement system, with the added functionality of sprinting, which may or may not have taken me half an hour to implement. But at least it's done. And whilst I was faffing around with player speed values, Insta was hard at work implementing the interaction system. And this is one of the best things he has ever done, because his way of doing it was far better than the way that I was planning on doing it. So thanks, Insta. Now with our first two things completed, I moved on to creating the map. From first drawing out the basic layout in the best graphical editing software ever made, to splitting it up into three unique zones. And finally, throwing it all into Unity and creating the basic shapes in Pro Builder. And after a whole day of work, here is the map. And don't worry, there is still a lot to change and tweak. Now, at this point, it had already been a couple of days into the game jam, and Insta had sadly been unable to work on the project due to lots of scheduling issues caused by the fact that he lives on the polar opposite end of the world to me. So, this had left me with the task of deciding on the gameplay and how it should work. And me being the very experienced and smart game developer that I am, I decided that the game should be a multiplayer puzzle-solving game with classes, particularly inspired by Among Us. The plan for the game was that up to four players would start in this room on the map and then be split up into different zones of the map depending on what class they selected to solve a combination of puzzles before all coming back into the central control room to solve one final cooperative puzzle. Now looking back, I'm not sure what I was thinking by setting this goal, but nevertheless, I steamed on for a day or two like this until I was faced with the realisation of... I remember the day clearly. I had just sat down to work on the game and had fellow developer Lazy T Studios livestream on in the background. I was very happy with the level that I had been iterating on for the last few days, and I wanted to get as many opinions on it as I could, so I sent it off with Lazy to get his opinions, and what I received was a complete dissection of every single element of it, which was a very, very eye-opening experience, and useful to me as it single-handedly saved the game from overscope and not being completed. So I left that stream with three things that I needed to complete. One, reduce my initial idea massively. Two, redesign the majority of the game map. And three, to rewrite my game design document, which had become an absolute mess at this point. So that is what I set off doing. And after an hour or so, here is the new game loop. One player would start off in the same room on the map with a locked door all overlooking the black hole. They would then need to unlock this door by playing a minigame on a terminal. After that, the player would need to make their way through an abandoned facility completing lots of different minigames to try and reactivate the black hole containment system and complete the game. All of these changes occurred about halfway through the game jam. 
And so with a new week right around the corner, and the knowledge that I wouldn't be able to spend as much time working on the game, I got cracking right away, starting off with creating the mini-games. There are four mini-games that I ended up making. The first one that the player encounters is the lockpicking minigame. Its purpose? To unlock doors. This puzzle is going to be a recurring puzzle that the player will have to constantly keep on solving throughout the game. Throughout the game, the player will encounter lots of different variations of this minigame, with the main feature being a different amount of springs each time. And as to how you actually pick a lock, you complete it by completing a small reaction test to move on to the next pick, and on completion of the final spring, the door will spring open. Now, next up we have the wiring minigame. Its purpose? To complete the broken circuit. To complete this minigame, you will need to steer a wire head through a maze, making sure not to touch the walls, to complete the circuit and to reactivate the system. The next minigame is more of a puzzle, and that puzzle to complete the pipe circuit. And yes, it is different to the last one. How, you may be asking? Well, this time, instead of having to steer a funkily physics-y controlled head through a maze, you are given a grid of pipes to rotate, and once rotated into the correct orientation, the circuit will be completed. Now. The final minigame is the Flippy Switchy minigame. I couldn't come up with a better name. In this minigame, you will have a bank of four switches which will randomly flip and unflip. Your job? To keep them flipped upright for long enough that this progress bar reaches the end, reactivating the four containment pillars and saving the facility. And now with our final minigame complete, it's now time to create an environment for them to go in. Remember the map from earlier? Well, I have been doing some work on it in the background in light of what Lazy said a few days ago, and it now features a much more linear progression, with unique areas such as the control room, the server room, the corridor of doom, and the storage room. Each of these environments were themed about a different minigame that you complete in that zone, and on completing the minigames, I haven't properly told you how you do that. So allow me to introduce you, dear viewer, the terminal, your universal interaction computer thingy, loaded up with any program you can desire. And to finish off with the map makeover, I decided to rework the visuals for the black hole and its containment system, utilizing my advanced pro builder knowledge, because I refuse to learn Blender, and of course some fancy lighting to round everything off. Sprinkle that in with some sound effects, a footstep script from Insta, interior lighting, and an ambient hum from the black hole. The game was as done as it could be in the time we had, so at 11 o'clock at night, and with 1 hour and 44 minutes left on the clock, I submitted the game and waited for the results. But as the voting period began, I saw that another game developer I follow called Addy Valentine's was hosting a game jam, the Addy Valentine's Game Jamboree, and so I had the genius decision to participate in another one whilst waiting for the results, and so led to the creation of one of my favourite games that I've ever made, ever. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you a totally legitimate way to win races. But unfortunately, that's going to have to wait till next time, as this video has already taken me four months to make and I need to release something before YouTube deems my channel as dead. If you want to play the game from this video, then there'll be a link to it in the description. Make sure to subscribe to not miss part two. Thank you so much for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!